So this video quality is not really the best, right? But I think it is still pretty impressive when you consider that this small drone is sending it wirelessly to those receiver goggles. And needless to say, I'm currently obsessed flying my drone with these goggles on because it is a unique experience to see the world through the eyes of a fast drone crashing most of the time. But while flying, I realized that the wireless video connection does come with a limited range, which not only got me wondering how this wireless video system works, but also whether I could improve it. Now, I would love to say that I managed to do just that, but in reality, I spent a week testing different wireless video techniques only to end up with terrible results and a byproduct, which is a short range Wi Fi jammer that can mess up your internet connection. So, if that sounds interesting to you, then stay tuned because I will tell you exactly how I got to this point. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by Keysight, who are currently looking for and hiring talented radio frequency, software and digital engineers in the USA and Germany. If that sounds like you, then feel free to check out the video description, because maybe you can find your dream job at Keysight. I wish you good luck. First off, in order to get an initial idea how the wireless video system of my drone functions, I obviously firstly took it apart in order to have a closer look at its camera. It comes with a total of three connection wires, which are red for 5 volts, black for ground and white for the data line, which after probing it with an oscilloscope looks like this on the screen. Now you might not know it, but you probably already used such a signal before, if you're familiar with old school CRT TVs like this one and of course such a yellow composite connector. Because yes, this is an old school analog composite video signal. Each one of those bursts I would call them comes with all the video information for one line of the CRT TV. We got the synchronization parts which indicates that a new line starts and afterwards the color burst and the luminance levels, which dictate the color and brightness of each pixel. And of course, they all come with varying voltage values to represent their brightness values. Because, like I said before, we are dealing with an analog signal here. This signal then repeats depending on how many lines we are drawing on the TV. And thus, we got all the information for one complete picture. And if for some reason you don't believe me, then let me just hook up my drone's camera replacement data signal to my CRT TV's video inputs in order to prove my point in a more practical manner. Ok, so now we understand what kind of video signal we are dealing with. But I still had no idea how the wireless communication looks like. So what I did next was examining all the IC labels on the drone's PCB and googling what their purposes are. And I think this RTC 6705 is the winner for me here because it is a 5.8 GHz band FM transmitter, which as the datasheet states, generates a 5.8 GHz FM signal modulated by a video signal. That of course initially sounds complicated, but in a nutshell, the IC firstly creates a carrier signal with a frequency of 5.8 GHz. Then we mix it up with our video signal, which is the modulating signal. And thus, our IC now creates a new signal similar to the 5.8 GHz one, with the only difference that depending on the voltage levels of the video signal, the frequency of the new frequency modulated signal changes up and down a bit. And I know that my FM aka frequency modulated signal is not very accurate here, but bear with me. Because afterwards, this FM signal gets sent out through an antenna and picked up by the receiver goggles, which also use the 5.8 GHz waveform to then demodulate it. And thus, we finally get the original video signal we started with. Of course, the exact frequency can vary a bit, but that is also why the receiver comes with a variety of channels that cover all possible frequencies around 5.8 GHz. 
Now at this point, the general functional principle of this wireless video system should be clear. And I started to wonder how to improve it. And of course, to get inspired, I firstly asked Google Images, where I mainly found this type of transistor amplifier circuit for this sort of application. What it basically does is creating a carrier signal through the help of an LC tank circuit, whose resonance frequency is determined by the used inductance and capacitance. The video signal then modulates this carrier signal a bit in I think both an amplitude and frequency direction, because let's face it, this circuit is rather simple and thus not optimal. But nevertheless, I still gave it a try by creating my own handmade coil and soldering all components together in midair to ultimately create this beauty. And after hooking up the camera to it, it was time to power everything and see whether any wireless transmission to my old CRT TV was possible. After scanning the frequency bands for a while, I found something promising, which definitely was related to my transmitter. But sadly, at no point was I able to see actual camera footage. And worst of all, the use frequency was only around 7 MHz, which is way way lower than the desired 5800 MHz, aka 5.8 GHz we need for the goggles. To achieve such a high frequency though, we would require a super tiny inductance and or capacitance. And let me tell you right now that this is not practically achievable. Which basically means we cannot use this type of circuit for the job. Instead I got interested in VCO's the datasheet mentioned, which stands for Voltage Controlled Oscillator. For example, a 5.8 GHz VCO would internally create a 5.8 GHz signal whose frequency we could fine tune with a DC voltage through the tune pin. And thus on the outputs we would once again get the frequency modulated signal we were after from the beginning. So needless to say, I searched for such a VCO next on the internet and really only found one on AliExpress, which at first sight seemed a bit sketchy, but it at least came with a bit of documentation. So after ordering and waiting for two weeks, I finally received my promised VCO boards, which after removing one of the metal shields, revealed some promising looking circuitry. So according to the given example schematic, I basically only soldered additional bypass capacitors to the boards as well as an antenna wire. And after then creating a small op amp circuit for the camera's data signal, in order to perfectly adjust the signal between 2 to 5 volts, it was time to connect these circuits and power them. At this point, I desperately searched through all the channels of my receiver goggles, and once again, only found traces of a signal but not anything that would resemble a camera image. Which got me wondering whether these AliExpress VCOs even work in the first place. To check that, I ordered very similar ones that come with a frequency of 2.4 GHz, which is the frequency your Wi-Fi connection uses most of the time. After building up a test circuit according to once again the given schematic, I this time used my oscilloscope's function generator for the tuning voltage input of the VCO. My goal here was to basically spit out noise that messes with the Wi-Fi connection of my laptop, in order to prove that those VCOs actually do work. That is why I will not tell you what exact frequency I'm using for the tuning voltage, because I do not want others to build this jammer. But then again, it is also so low power that it only works properly around 20 cm next to it. And as you can see in this demonstration, the Wi-Fi connection works perfectly fine until I turn on the VCO, which now messes things up and thus completely interrupts the internet connection, meaning the VCOs do in fact work. So what is the problem with the 5.8 GHz one you might ask? And I would have to confess that I'm not entirely sure. Now of course, I tried a few different other approaches with it. Tried switching to a 2.4 GHz receiver, which also didn't work with the fitting AliExpress VCO. And I even tried another 2.4 GHz VCO IC from Maxim, which to my surprise, actually delivered a part of the camera image 
but it still looked quite terrible. So all in all, I think there's either a hole in my theory, or I'm missing something completely. Either way, I hope you got some feedback from me in the comment section. Until we find a solution though, I will have to get comfortable with pre-made wireless video solutions. And I hope you at least learned something new through this video. If so, consider supporting me through Patreon to keep the show going. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Stay creative and I will see you next time!